Welcome to In Conversation, a very special one today. We are at Engefest, uh, hence the noise and activities going on around us. I'm with Manta Single, a former toy engineer who worked on such toys as Action Man, Play-Doh and Monopoly. Manta, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, good, thank you. Um, you've just given a presentation downstairs uh, to a room full of young, inquisitive minds. How, how is that? It, it's absolutely amazing talking to the next generation of engineers about toy, toy engineering. I mean, what better field to be talking about? Because everyone has toys, right? Yeah. Everyone's played with toys, everyone's got a favourite toy. So it's really nice to go into the engineering and actually the technical aspects of an everyday toy. So tell me about some of the, the toys you've designed. We just mentioned some there. Have you got, um, I mean, how, how do you get into to engineering toys? Um, well, I studied product design engineering, so I've always been fascinated in how things work and how things are made. So I was constantly, as a child, taking things apart, putting things together, sticking things to one another, just seeing like something new, something different, discovering. So I really knew that I wanted to develop products in some way, make the world a little bit better. And um, at university, I looked at designing medical equipment for children and got a placement with Polaroid developing children's cameras and yeah that was the kind of the beginning of me entering the children's space of product development product engineering and um, I got um, a job offer from a very big toy company and um, the rest was kind of history I spent nine really fun quite difficult but very fun rewarding years within the sector it sounds incredible as a, as a job to to be able to tell people that you you make toys for a living, <laughs> yeah. I can't. I mean, I've got two small children, and they oh, they would be they would love that. Um, so, in terms of of your 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 toy engineering, are there any any toys that stand out as being perhaps I don't know maybe the most complex? Um, I think each toy has its own kind of nuances that makes it complicated. Even like a soft toy that you think. Yeah, it's a bit of fabric with some stuffing in it, if you put it in its simplest terms. But there's so much engineering within that, whether it's safety, whether it's how the, the stitching's done to make sure that, you know, it, it can go out in the market, it can be mass produced. So I think even, I think what struck me was a basic bit of, um, you know, equipment um, involves so much engineering. So I was looking at colouring in books. <laughs> I was absolutely flabbergasted about how much engineering went into a colouring book. Really? About the inks that were used, about the... Again, it comes down to regulations within the industry because it's seen as a toy. A colouring book, a bit of print on a paper is seen as a toy within the regulatory, regulatory world. So it had to comply with small parts and all these things. But it's also, again, how can a, how can a toy be misused as well? Yes, I have many a story of rolling up a colouring book and <laughs> I have brothers. Um, so, so what's perhaps the, um, the, the best toy the, or the most fun, the, the one that you enjoyed uh, creating most? Um, God, there were so many, to be honest. Um, I think it's when you work from beginning to end on a project and sometimes the most challenging of projects are the most rewarding, the most memorable. So it, it might not have sold the biggest number of, you know, the, the hugest number of sales or whatever. But for me, it was just the effort that went in makes it worthwhile. Um, I remember working with, on, on a Monopoly product and um, it involved designers from Hollywood and from Boston and manufacturers in China. And it was that team that just made it amazing, whether it was the early morning calls to China to the late night discussions with the American team. And it was sitting there trying to make the costs work out, the, the project management angles, the, you know, the, the whole aspect, that's what made it really rewarding. And I think it was a limited edition from what I recall. And I still have one sealed in the loft somewhere in my parents' room. Um, yeah, and I, and I was literally 22 when I worked in that. And I, and I think it, it's the tougher projects that just make it really rewarding. Yeah. So in terms of um, the, the process of, of, of creating, coming up with the idea, designing, and then implementing all the way through to market. How does that process work? Um, well, whether it's toys or whether it's any other bit of great bit of engineering, the process is actually very similar, which is why I've been able to move sectors, whether it's been designing cameras, home appliances, food, packaging, but also toys. The process is very similar. So it's about 
looking at the user, what are they looking for, why do they want this product, or actually there's a need out there, there's a, there's a pain out there, you know, there's something there that needs to be fixed. And then looking at ideas that could solve that, that need. So it might be that we want a, a new toy for a film, but what would that look like? And working with really creative people, designers, blue sky thinkers, inventors, and then looking at your constraints, whether it's cost, manufacturing, engineering, your resources within the company, time, quality, yeah. um, and starting to funnel it down and, and then seeing what you can make within that space of time. And then making models and prototypes to actually see if you can launch it. So, actually, this, the skill set you're, you're, you're telling me there, it, it, it sounds as though that engineering skill set is very much transferable. Oh, so, absolutely. So, it sounds to me that actually, if you are thinking engineering, then actually, it, it sounds like there's a plethora of jobs out there. Yeah, and I think engineers are problem solvers. So, you can move. You know, I've moved sectors numerous times. I've, I've moved job roles quite a lot. But it's all about wanting to make the world a little bit better, improving every day, and seeing these are my constraints, these are my resources. What can I do with that? How can I be a bit more creative and a bit more innovative with what I've got? Now, I, I have one last question, and this is... Uh, so I have, I have two children, and, and let me know if, if you suffer with this at <laughs> home as well, if you're a parent. Um, but when we go out toy shopping, there's often aisles for kind of girls' toys, girls' toys yeah. that are very pink. Uh, and then you might move on to the boys' toys, which are perhaps robots fighting swords and, and blue. Uh, how do we go about kind of breaking that down? Because my children love to play with, with all toys and they'll play together. I have a, a daughter and a son. Yeah. So how do we go about kind of breaking that down, that stereotype in, in the toy industry? Because surely if we, if we work in pink toys and blue toys at such a young age, that's going to have a knock-on effect to, to the way that our children grow up. Yeah, and I, I just think it doesn't matter what colour the toy is. If a child likes playing with the toy, they like playing with the toy. And I think it's, you know, I, it's just about nurturing an interest. And I've got friends who've got kids whose little boys like playing with pink toys, and there's nothing wrong with that. And equally, I played with lots of cars and building blocks when I was a child. Maybe that's why I became an engineer. I don't know. Um, but I think it's there is there is maybe a, a, a way of thinking that the pinks for girls and blues for boys. But there's nothing. There's no hard and fast rules. Absolutely. And, and it's what, what's of interest and maybe what, what's on trend as well, whether it's colours that are fashionable. But um, I, I love pink. So. I love pink. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I still love playing with toys as well. And I'm well too old to... Am I too old to be playing with toys? Never. You're never, never too old. old. <laughs> uh, a Rubik's Cube is, is a personal favourite. In fact, if you've got a favourite toy, feel free to drop it in the comments box. Let us know which takes you back to your, your youth. Or if you're young, let us know what you like playing with now. Manta. What, what toy you might want to invent? What a cool Even toy! Even better, come there. up with some fantastic <laughs> ideas, and then perhaps we can see if we can get them to market. That'll be fantastic. Great idea, Manta. Manta, thank you ever so much for your time. You're welcome. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.